Okay. So when you've got your scene to a place where you want to save it, or if you're just, you know, you're leaving and you need to save it, um, and you're going to uh, work on it later, uh, obviously the first thing you want to do is save. So, you know, if you're in a level or whatever and you make some change, it'll show you that there's unsaved uh, stuff but when you see this little asterisk. Um, so just hit Command S to save, or you can go to Scene, Save Scene As, or Save Scene. Um, and so once you've got stuff saved, when you go over to GitHub, you're going to notice that there's going to be some new files here. Uh, and this file is completely new, so it's all, all green. But sometimes when you've made changes to a file that it already knows about, you'll see some green and some other things. So we'll see that in a later class. But we can see this file is something that we added. And you can use these checkboxes. If you have something that you don't want to push to your GitHub, you can just turn it off. Um, there are also some files that you may not want to save. Like maybe you have some 3D files that you were just working on, but you don't actually want to upload them to GitHub. Um, you can also ignore files. This DS store file is like a Mac file that it generates just to keep track of where your folders are. Um, we don't really need that in our GitHub repo. It's not the end of the world if you add it. Um, but one thing that you can do to ignore files in GitHub, um, you can go to repository and go to repository settings. And there's this thing called ignore files. I set up some specifics for Godot for everybody. So if you downloaded the game template, you'll already have these files ignored. So it ignores things like there's all these hidden files um, that are like caches that make the, the project run faster. Um, so those are going to be ignored. Um, and you can add stuff in here. So if I say .ds store, you just type in the name of the file or the folder you want to ignore. And I click Save. Now that file disappeared. But my git ignore file is different now. See, I, it shows me that I added something. Um, so I'm going to commit that. So in GitHub, even though we've saved the project on the computer file, when we want to save something to GitHub, it's actually two steps. Uh, we have to add it, which is this is doing already for us, which is nice. But then we have to make a commit. A commit is basically saying, like, these changes are something that I want to remember. Um, and that's kind of like what I was talking about before when we had, like, you're working on the feature and you have like B1, B2. As you're adding stuff, you're committing those changes to, to be part of the project. So when you make a commit, you're just going to type a summary and it's just going to be something basic, just explains what it's for. So I'm just going to say working on level one. And I'm going to commit here. And that'll bring up this new interface. And when you commit something, it's going to ask you if you want to push to the origin. That means you're putting the changes that you made into the main repo. Double check that your branch is set to your branch and not my branch, because obviously you can't push to my branch. Um, but if it's set to your main default, it should be fine. And then just click push to origin, and it'll do that. Or you can click the blue button. And then if you want to make sure that worked, click view on GitHub. And you'll see, see where it says working on level one. So that's the commit that I just added to GitHub. Um, and so if I go to my home computer and I sync this, it's going to take all those changes that I made on this computer and it's going to be on my computer at home so I can keep working on it there. Same thing if, you know, for some reason the files on this computer get deleted, I can always just re-download it from here. So it's kind of like a backup as well. Um, this way you also don't have to like email yourself your projects or use a thumb drive or whatever. Um, so that's all you have to do to update GitHub. If you make changes somewhere else and you come back here, this may say fetch origin, and you can just click on that button. Make sure that you're synced, because if you make changes on this computer, but you've made changes over there, and they're not in sync, you're going to have some issues. It's not the end of the world. I can help you go through what those issues are. But just make sure that when you come back to class, if you worked on the project on a different computer, just click this fetch button, and that'll, that'll make sure you're up to date. OK, so once you've saved and updated GitHub, uh, you're going to want to post some documentation on the blog. Um, so to do that, uh, just as a reminder from the Blackboard page, you're going to want to post on the OpenLab site. If you haven't joined the OpenLab course yet, you can just click here. And if you're signed in, you'll be able to join here. It'll say join. And so you can add yourself to the class members. Once you do that uh, and you go back to the class site, you'll see these buttons up here in the dashboard. 
um, and this plus button is going to let you create a post. So when we create a post, uh, we want to include some documentation uh, in the form of screenshots or videos. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of you guys already know how to do that, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to do a, a pretty quick version of that. But there's also this link here to uh, some documentation resources. Um, just some videos on screenshots for Mac and Windows, screen recording for Mac and Windows, and if you want to do something fancy, uh, using OBS for Mac or Windows. Um, so uh, we're going to take some screenshots first. So I'm going to go back over to Godot. You can take a screenshot of your scene in Godot if you want. Um, you can even click on this to make the view bigger. And the way that I like to take a screenshot is I on the Mac, I hit Command, Shift, and 4. That brings up this little uh, target, which I can select an area. But what's even cleaner is if I hit the space bar, that target turns into a camera. And if I click on a window, it makes an image of that window. It's going to save that to my desktop. Um, you might want to take a image of the game being played. So I'm going to go over this again later. But just to show you real quick, if you want to actually run the game, uh, we didn't quite get to this yet. You're going to have to add the player in. So click on the main level. Click on this link button. Um, this is to add other scenes inside of your scene. And just choose the default player scene and add that in there. Going to have to move him up above the ground a little bit. You can see our player here. He's just a white uh, little BB capsule with a camera on his head. And once you have that in here, if I click this play uh, current scene, you'll actually be able to run the game. Uh-oh. Oh, I have to click on here. What? For some reason, it's running my player scene, not my level scene. That's weird. Um, oh, I maybe I need to check this. OK, that's really weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Huh. Um, maybe if I build the. Okay, maybe. Huh. That's not what's supposed to be happening. Okay, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I'll debug that um, later, but that's sort of weird. Uh, it should be running the scene, but it looks like I'm just running. Oh no! Oh oh! I forgot it. There's an there's an extra step, but you see the tree there. I can walk around here. Okay, so there's actually an extra step. Again, I'm going to cover this next week. But uh, one of the new things about Godot 4 that I keep forgetting about is that there's an editor environment which is not default actually in the scene, but it's really easy to add. If you click on this sunlight thing and this environment thing, what you can do is actually add to the scene, add to the scene. Because that's just so you can actually preview the scene while you're editing. But now in the new Godot, you have to actually add the environment, which is the sky, and then a light, which is like the sunlight. So now when I run this scene, now we actually see our tree. And I can walk around and jump. And so if you want to get documentation from inside the scene, I can run the scene. Then I can do the same thing. I can hit Command Shift 4 and then Space Bar and then click on that window and it's going to take an image of that window. Um, so I'm going to review uh, adding the player and all that stuff later. Um, we're going to talk about that next week. Um, but I just wanted to quickly go over that in case you want to do that and take some documentation. OK, so I've got a couple images. I'm ready to do some documentation. I'm going to go over to Chrome and I'm going to click on this Post button. And it's going to say, I have to add a category. So this is a WordPress blog. If you've used the Open Lab before, you might be familiar with this already. If you haven't, I'll just cover the basics real quick. Um, this is basically just a blog editing platform. Uh, it's very similar, similar to like Tumblr or Twitter or you know, other things that you've used probably. 
Uh, one thing, you might not see the menu. You can just click on that box to see this menu. It says, please select a category. So let's go to categories. And we're going to say weekly devlog. And that'll be our category. I'm going to add a title. Uh, we'll just call this first devlog. And here's where you can kind of write about what you're working on. Um, again, this week we're just getting started, so you might not have that much to say. That's fine. Uh, but as we start to develop the scene, this will be a good place to talk about, you know, your process and what you're what you're going for. Um, so I'm just going to say I created a scene with a tree. Okay, very exciting. So then, if I want to add my images, I can just drag and drop, or I can use this button here. Uh, there's an image block. Um, if I don't see that, I can type in image and it'll bring that up. There's my image block. I don't know why it's over here, but that's okay. I'm gonna click upload and I'm gonna go to my desktop. That's where those screenshots are gonna go. You might wanna put them in your folder so you have them for later, but for now I'm just gonna click on the screenshot. And then I'll also, if I want, I can just drag and drop. So I'm gonna open the finder for a second and go to the desktop and here's that other screenshot. So if you want to drag and drop, just grab your screenshot and you need a little blue box. If you don't see the blue box, it's not going to work. So we add in our blue box. They're very large for some reason. I think they won't look like that when we actually publish it. Um, and that's really it. Here are some screenshots. Um, if you have, you know, more stuff to, to add, feel free to add here, but for the first post, it can be pretty simple. If you want to see what that's going to look like, click on the little computer and preview in tab. And here's your first blog post. Okay. And then you're just going to click publish and click publish. Um, that's all you have to do for this one. You don't have to submit it on Blackboard. I'll get a notification and this will be part of the part participation grade. So I'll just kind of go back and look through your your devlog and, and make sure that you, you know, we're, we're doing it and that'll be part of the participation grade. Um, but the cool thing about the blog is if you click on your name, you'll be able to see all your posts. If you click on the category, you'll be able to see everything here. And so it'll be nice and organized. It'll be easy for you to, uh, you know, uh, see all your work throughout the semester. Another thing, if you have an open lab portfolio set up, um, I set it up so that you can add stuff to your portfolio just by clicking on that button. It'll make a copy of the post and add it into your portfolio. Um, so if you use the Open Lab portfolio, this is a good way to add stuff that you're working on in class onto your own blog. So, you know, it won't be just on the class blog anymore. It'll be over there as well. Uh, you don't have to do that, but that's an option. Um, and yes, that's it. So we'll do a weekly dev blog, um, you know, just to show what your progress is. It doesn't have to have tons and tons of stuff, but uh, just a way to keep track of what you're working on. Um, so yeah, that's it for that. So uh, any questions on any of that stuff? It's command shift four. Yeah, and then you hit space bar to get the camera. Okay, um, so we have until 540. Uh, so you guys can continue uh, playing around with Godot. Uh, make sure to update your GitHub uh, before you leave if you're using a class computer. Uh, and if you want to make your devlog post before you leave, you can do that. If you want to make it you know, later in the week, that's fine. Um, but if you do it in class, then you don't have to worry about doing it later. Um, so uh, you might want to try that. And yeah, I'll stop there.